Hello. Welcome back. We're live on SABC3 with your Feel Good Breakfast Show. And it's a medical Tuesday, which you know Dr. Darren Green is in the house. So what are we talking about today? Blood. Mm -hmm. Yes, that runny, icky stuff that most of us prefer yeah. not to look at at all. <laughs> but whether it freaks you out or not, there's about five litres of it flowing through your body right now. The same volume, if you could imagine, one of those boxes of wine. Mm. That's how much, if you need like a visual representation. Box wine. Yes, now when it comes to <laughs> bleeding, there are a variety of factors that affect it. And today we sit down with Dr. Darren Green to discuss these bleeding disorders. So if you have, um, you know, if you suffer from a blood disorder, why don't you give us a call our number is 0839133728 now mm. dr darren green what, yes. blood? what, uh, <laughs> what would you consider to be considered healthy blood yeah well healthy blood actually just basically contains all the healthy elements of blood which means the blood volume itself is enough for the needs that that you require in, in the system and that the cells present in blood from the red cells <coughs> to the platelets the white cells that they're all present because they all have a distinct function the red cells obviously carry oxygen or mm -hmm. hemoglobin the white cells are involved with your immune system and protection and the platelets are involved with obviously blocking those leaks when you start bleeding yes. so we uh, healthy blood would imply that you have all the components there ready mm. for action mm. uh, as well as obviously a good turnover because some of the blood cells get re recycled they break down after a lifespan of say a hundred days for example in red cells mm. and they need then you know new ones need to be made so yeah. that whole process and that cycle needs to continue uh, uninterruptedly I wanted to ask a very basic question and it may be stupid you may say so if it is but why do we have blood why do we need blood well we need it because you know if you need, uh, for example, the function in your calf muscles, you've got big calves. Thank you. I've been <laughs> <laughs> calf muscles. You need oxygen and nutrients for that muscle to function. And the only way of getting oxygen and nutrients to that muscle is by something that's mobile that brings it from the source of, inge of ingestion, which would be the eating, yes. down to the tummy. That will need to be reabsorbed. And then it need, you need to get what you Tune need me, there. Yeah. So you need a transport mechanism, and the blood does that. When you have an infection, you need the white cells, the soldier cells of the body, to be transported to a specific site. If you have an abscess, uh, if you have a, then a cut or a bleed, then obviously your platelets and, and those clotting factors need to obviously have the action at yes. the site. So you need a mechanism of getting things, a network to get things wherever they need to be to carry out those functions. And one that can go through all the different Correct. organs and things like that. Now, Dr. Darren Green, I'm someone that's prone to accidents, always cutting myself. <laughs> um, in terms of the amount of time it takes to stop bleeding, is there an average time? Yes, yeah, so they actually can measure in the laboratory, uh, you know, the different tests, but a bleeding time is when you have a, a superficial cut that's actually made, and then they look at how long it takes for it to stop bleeding. Often we pick up then if someone has a platelet dysfunction or even a clotting order, uh, you know, where you then need to do specialized blood tests to look at the different <laughs> clotting factors involved in the cascade of, of, of clotting. So, yes, two to eight minutes is, a, is a quite a, a, a wide uh, range of your blood clotting but obviously if you carry on bleeding 15 minutes after a little cut then you know that you need to obviously seek help and find out if you don't have a platelet shortage and what about that situation where you, you, you do cut yourself right yes is there anything you can look out for other than the extended bleeding uh, that would indicate that there's something wrong with your blood because we're going to talk more about blood disorders a bit later on the, the color sure. And the... yeah sure gladly so Obviously, you'll notice initially it'll be bright red, and as, as blood then obviously stands, it can clot, especially if it's exposed to the, to the environment. It forms thick clots. Ask any woman that's given birth, for example. Uh, and then, obviously, what you have uh, is then you, you, you can't tell anything about the microstructure in the blood by just looking at a little, you know, a little uh, clot on your hand that's already formed. Mm -hmm. So you can't uh, comment on the amount of platelets or the cell types uh, and all that without looking at it under a microscope. That's why our pathologists are really important in helping us discover and diagnose bleeding disorders, for mm. example. All right, well, we'll talk a little bit more about that, asking questions about blood disorders, blood clotting, anemia, and also ask Dr. Darren Green, why is it that vampires like it so much? Mm -hmm. uh, you can give us a call on 83 We'll be back with the doctor very shortly right now. Let's head on over to the kitchen. Oh, thank you, straight on. Well, listen, we are talking to Dr. Darren Green. It's all about Medical Tuesdays. This morning in particular, we are focusing on blood disorders. Mm. So if you have a blood disorder, you have a question or a comment for the doctor, give us a call. Our number is 083-9133-728. But uh, Dr. Darren Green, we want to know, basically, 
what is what causes your blood to thin? Even though it's thicker than water, but it's <laughs> it thins. Yeah. <laughs> to thin. Yeah, so there are different things that affect the viscosity, the flowing nature of the liquid that is mm. blood, obviously. And things like dehydration, the amount of the water component of blood, the thickness of that plasma, the density of cells as they pass through the capillaries. In other words, how many red cells have you got in a certain centimeter of capillary busy moving through that little fine capillary, for example. Mm -hmm. So what we call the corpuscular volume in the amount of cells, the, the hydration status, and the amount of clotting factor in your, in your system. And mm. clotting factors are very important in, in, in obviously stopping any bleeding. Yes. But they're part of natural, natural life because you, you need them to be cycled and recycled for emergencies. They're made in the liver. They're dependent on a lot of nutrition as well. Okay. So uh, we need all these components, obviously, uh, uh, present in the blood at all times, ready for action whenever we need them. Yeah. And is there medication that one can take? Because I'm assuming if the viscosity of your blood is, is very thin yes. and you do cut yourself, you're likely to bleed out faster. Correct. Right? So, so what or when you drink alcohol, if you think about people having wine and alcohol, you know, they say, I bled like a pig because it oh. actually thins the blood. People okay. know that alcohol, for example, thins the blood. So do, do other meds that, that we use specifically with specific indications like aspirin and warfarin mm -hmm. and heparin, etc. So uh, yeah, the, that is very, very important to understand that there's certain medical conditions that need your blood to be thinner. Yeah. Otherwise, you would run the risk of it being so thick that it moves slowly through the vessels and has a more a more prone nature to actually clot and oh. cause blockage in the blood vessels with stroke with heart and em embolism that can mm. shoot to the lung, for example, or deep venous thrombosis in your calves even. Wow, sure. deep venous thrombosis. Mm. Put that on your DVT. Scrabble. <laughs> Put that on your Scrabble. Huh? Now, um, I, had, I had a friend in high school that suffered from nosebleeds. Is, yes, is that, yes, yes. What, what would contribute to that? Is it normal? When to worry about a nosebleed? I get asked that by parents all the time because yes. children, obviously, there's an association if a child has recurrent nosebleeds that by doing a full blood count, you might discover that your child has a blood cancer or leukemia, for example, uh, or understanding for, that you might have a shortage of platelets, etc. So when you have a recurrent problem where your nosebleeds are not due to you just having a little sinus infection or a nasal infection with crusting and the, and the plaque breaking off and then and you can't stop it. You need to check how much blood has the child lost, how much blood have you lost. What's your hemoglobin level, your iron level, because you could get quite tired and lose a lot of blood. Yeah. Uh, but obviously if it re recurs, you would need to look in finer detail yeah. at the components. Let's take a call, shall we? Uh, Sunet is calling us all the way from Marmersbury. Hello there, Sunet. Good morning. How are you? Well, I'm fine, thanks. Um, I've got a question for the doctor. Mm, Say, for instance, a person is O positive or O negative and in the A positive blood groups. What is their chances for blood disorders? Um, does a certain a different blood Good groups have, is, are they more prone to problems than others? That's great. A great question, Good question. Thank and, you. And, and no, there isn't an association with specific blood groups regarding the bleeding disorders as such. Yes. So it's as simple okay. as that. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we're going to take a very quick break, but we do encourage you to please keep on calling us on 83 as we continue our Medical Tuesday chat with uh, Dr. Darren. In fact, we want to find out later on, when you cut yourself and you don't bleed as much as you think you should be bleeding, mm. should you be worried? Mm. Huh? Is that a bloody disaster? Oh. Uh, um, let's take a quick help. break. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back. We're live on SABC3 with your feel-good breakfast show as we all get a rush of blood to the head on this Medical Tuesday. Dr. Darren Green is uh, in our hot seat and we're talking all things concerning blood. And we asked earlier on, just before the break, if you cut yourself and you don't bleed as much as you think you should be bleeding, should you be worried? Well, you shouldn't bleed at all. I mean, you might just have a really, really uh, good uh, clotting system. Wow. That works, like, within 10 seconds. But, you know, uh, where it comes in is you'd get other warning signs if your blood was really thick. Uh, you get conditions where, for example, there are too many red cells mm. uh, in the blood, uh, like polycythemia vera, which can also put you at risk for developing things like stroke. So they actually tap off some blood so that they decrease the amount of red blood cells in that cycle oh, wow. quite often. And you often find that the, the amount of red cells is actually raised considerably in smokers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. All right, you've okay. got a call on mine. We do have a caller. Who are we? Uh, Joss. It's Joss. Joss. Good morning, Joss. 
Morning. Oh, thank you very much for the call. What's your question? Uh, my question is this. Um, some years ago, I developed uh, two blood disorders concurrently. The one was DBT, mm. and the other one was giant cell arthritis. Yes. Uh, the giant cell arthritis, I took uh, a long course of cortisone, and that sort of cleared up. And the other one, the DBT, um, I was on warfarin for a while, and that is also now apparently within the proper bands. Should I worry about any of these being having a lot long effect, or should I uh, sort of be worried about the fact that they might uh, affect me at later times and be careful, for instance, when I fly? Thank you so much for that call, Josh. We really appreciate it. First of all, D DVT? Deep venous thrombosis. There we go. Okay. So you can have them in the arms, you can have them in the legs. The most common uh, site is actually in the calves or the mm -hmm. lower limbs. So uh, interesting, you mentioned flying as well, and he's asking, is he at risk? Yes, so if you've had one previous episode of a deep venous thrombosis, you immediately are at a twice as high a risk of developing and having a recurrent one. Yes. So we treat them, obviously, initially for the first three months in dissolving that clot by putting them onto anticoagulation, things like warfarin, for example. Mm -hmm. But we stop that treatment if it's the first presentation. If, people, if someone has a recurrent an event, uh, in this case, if he is doing long-haul flights, he needs to wear those stockings, he needs to be mobile on the plane, and even consider taking something for the trip that actually keeps the blood a bit thinner while going on long-haul flights, like a, a, a low molecular weight heparin injection, like Clexane, for example. Mm -hmm. So that's quite important. And then obviously remembering also that if you had to have a recurrent deep venous thrombosis or embolism, you'd have to be on an anticoagulant lifelong. All right. Um, yeah, we're going to talk about anemia as one of the most, I guess, heard of blood disorders. And does it necessarily just, just mean you've got a low iron, low iron level in yeah. your blood? Is that, is that it? Yeah, that, well, there's a lot more to it than that because there's different types and different causes. You know, an iron shortage anemia probably is the most common one yes. where yeah. you just have a shortage of iron. So your red blood cells need hemoglobin uh, to to actually bond and, and carry oxygen through, through the system. Mm. But you have different forms of iron. You have iron that's actually floating around in the blood. Uh, you have iron that's stored, for example, in the liver, uh, and then you have iron, obviously, that's accompanying the red blood cell. So when it comes to anemia, different subtypes, nutritional deficiencies lead to anemia. Mm -hmm. Not eating enough iron can lead to anemia. Chronic disease, cancers, HIV can lead to anemia as well. And then you get the autoimmune ones where you just have, for example, antibodies that gobble up, uh, basically, the... the the iron itself. Mm -hmm. So you need to understand that it's from absorption of iron all the way through to the cofactors that are needed, like simple vitamins. Yeah. Uh, you need vitamin B12 and folic acid or folate as part of the cycle to actually absorb uh, iron from the gut when mm. you eat it. Yeah. I feel like I'm due a, da a jab. <laughs> due a jab. The good old buttocks <laughs> for that vitamin B. Well, all we'll right. be back with Dr. <laughs> Darren Green. I still want to find out about some of the symptoms sure. regarding, you know, whether you're anemic or not. Well, this is your feel-good breakfast show. If you've got a blood a question regarding a blood disorder, give us a call. Our number is 0839133728. But we still have lots coming up for you on your feel-good breakfast show. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Oh, well, we're back with Dr. Darren Green. We are talking bleeding disorders. Kat wants me to make a joke. You oh, have one. You've I, got one. I, I, I thought you might, you might call it a bloody good conversation. Oh, it is one. It is one indeed. <laughs> <That's a> deep... <laughs> and now, uh, of course, we're engaging with you as well. <laughs> We've got a caller on the line, Mr. Jacobs from Cape Town. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for your call, Mr. Jacobs. You're live on Expresso. What's your question? My is that, man, I'm suffering from gout, and at the moment, the gout has got me so short in my big, in my, in my right, my big toe. Okay? Mm -hmm. And it's completely painful. And that is you, uh, in, my, in my right, in my right uh, leg, yeah, the blood circulation is very bad. All right, so thank you very much for that, Mr. Jacob. So I guess, uh, what would be the treatment? Yeah, so for those they two... They mentioned gout. Mm -hmm. Gout is uh, to do with anemia or with blood disorder. It's got to do with raised uric acid levels. Mm -hmm. So you have crystals depositing at the joint surface uh, due to raised uric acid levels. That would uh, Im imply that it needs to look at some lifestyle factors, diet-related, alcohol-related, uh, as well as, obviously, other uh, chronic diseases of lifestyle, like associated diabetes, hypertension, 
and so forth. Mm -hmm. That will need to be managed. And All then right. you can go on to preventative therapy for gout if it's really a problem, and then acute therapy when needed. The, the, the leg, uh, poor circulation in the legs is a big question people always ask. They look at the legs and they see, but my leg seems a bit bluey or purpley. It's got to do with the venous drainage, firstly. Uh, so we want to see the valves that milk the venous blood back up towards the heart so that it can be oxygenated again and mm -hmm. pumped out again. Those valves could be defective. There are conditions associated with poor venous return, things like diabetes, once again, uh, and other blood vessel disorders, you know. Uh, so you need to be aware of, of the process. And then obviously with blood supply to the leg, arterial blood mm -hmm. by the arteries, one would simply check the pulses to see is there enough oxygenated blood getting to the legs? Uh, what's the temperature of the distal leg light? Is it warm? Are there pulses that you can f feel uh, at the feet and behind the knee? Okay, oh. great thing to look out for. What can we do to ensure that we have healthy blood? I think uh, ensuring that you hydrate sufficiently, ensuring that the, the, the co-elements that are needed to absorb iron, uh, which is a very important component uh, in the red cells, you need to look at your diet. Things like vitamin K are extremely, <laughs> extremely important <laughs> with the clotting cascade. So uh, you also, with that, if you have problems with clotting and you're known with a bleeding disorder, you need to know which dietary things to, to skip. Things like broccoli and spinach uh, and cauliflower, cranberry juice can actually uh, enhance the working of your anticoagulation. Uh, and in other words, your warfarin, and they can make your blood too thin and then okay. you can bleed to death. So mm. you need to understand the impact of that. So certainly exercise and recycling red blood cells, very dependent on, 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 on uh, exercise and using them. And then, as I mentioned, dietary factors and, and hydration. All right. Okay. And then we're going to ask that last question, the very important question. Is it the vampire question? Yes. Yes. Why do vampires like it so much? It's so sweet. It's they sweet. like diabetics' blood, I think. Because really? there's so much sugar in it, I think. I think they have a tendency to that. Yeah. Well, there you have it. <laughs> Dr. Darren Green, thank you so much for thank joining you. us this morning. Thank, thank you. Thank you for, all, uh, for participating in our, our conversation this morning as well. Well, it is your feel-good breakfast show. Let's see what else is coming up.